and uh, welcome everyone. Um, I'm standing uh, because I am a member of the Socialist Equality Party. I believe that the Socialist Equality Party is unique amongst all other parties because we're the only ones telling the truth in this election. All of us spinning lies to suit the interests of big business and whatever party or combination of parties is elected on May 7th, it, it will continue its attacks on the working class on its conditions. This is because the financial crash of 2008 was only the start of a systematic breakdown of capitalism. And in Britain alone, the bank bailout cost one trillion. This has gone straight into the pockets of the super rich who have seen their wealth rise to record levels. Just 85 people control more wealth than 3.5 billion who could, uh, people, that's the population of China, Europe and America. Meanwhile, jobs, wages and conditions have been destroyed and health and education savaged. None of the great problems facing the working class and, the, and youth can be resolved without ending the dictatorship of the super rich over virtually every aspect of social and economic life. That is especially the case when the crisis is leading to the danger of a new third world war. Britain's up to its neck in NATO's reckless provocations against Russia. It sent military advisers to the Ukraine, to Syria, and it plans to send troops back uh, to Iraq after the election. But these matters of life and death have been completely excluded from these elections. What can we do in your constituency? I would hope that throughout the discussion you'll get a feel for what, what we think about the issues facing your community. But we do believe that they are part of a wider issue, um, that all the issues in, in Garn Garnet Hill are tied up with the fight against all forms of nationalism. We're seeking to organise workers and young people against austerity and war and the fight for a workers' government pledged to socialist policies. Thank you for your time. That's the question. Uh, this question comes from a 59-year-old carer with several chronic health conditions, who says that, nevertheless, I have been told by the job centre that I am fit to work and must get a job. I feel under massive strain because of this and fear having my benefits sanctioned. What can the candidates do for people like me can you give me any hope for the next five years? Uh, f f final uh, uh, answer here from Katie from uh, Socialist Equality Party, please. Thank you. Um, I'm a welfare rights officer in a local authority. I deal with the draconian uh, measures of welfare reform every single day and see the impact that it is making on ordinary working people. Let's be clear here. The Labour government introduced welfare reform and it has been continued and extended by the Tory party and by the Liberal Democrats in coalition. This is part of an attack on the working class's conditions, living conditions all over the world. This is not a national issue, it's not a community issue, it's a global issue. The super rich are, are organising globally the working class have to organise globally against these attacks. The reason that um, ATOS was um, scrapped, got rid of, was not because the Tories or the Liberal Democrats wanted to get rid of it because it was terrible. It was because of the media backlash, because they couldn't contain it, because so many people were committing suicide, because of the terrible conditions that they were forced to live in. Let's be clear who is responsible for welfare reform. And if we think for one minute that, you know, the SNP in Scotland are going to get rid of this, think again. Read the Smith Commission. The Smith Commission basically says that there will be certain powers um, in a devolved Scotland, but none of them will take away welfare reform. And the main issue is that the working class are being blamed for the crisis created by the capitalist profit system. And that is what has to go. Thank you. Thank you very much, Katie. Next question, please. Who have we got with a question? Catherine. 
Uh, this is a question that had been submitted in advance by a Garnet Hill resident, but it's also been raised by a number of people in the room tonight, so it's quite a burning issue. Um, Garnet Hill falls well within the nuclear fallout footprint should Fastlane be attacked in war. What proposals have the candidates to remove Trident from Fastlane and to take nuclear weapons out of Scotland and the UK? Could these weapons ever be used and would your party leader, if Prime Minister or in government, be prepared to use them? Thanks, Dennis. Uh, over to you, Katie. We are opposed to Trident. Um, <clears throat> however, they will, it will never be scrapped, no matter what combination um, of government uh, is elected on May 7th. Everything at the moment is leading towards a third world war, and it's behind the backs of the working class. And that is why there is such an emphasis placed on Trident in Scotland. It's to try and divert from the real issues. I just want to quote from the, uh, a NATO statement. This is regarding uh, Joint Warrior. Joint Warrior is uh, military manoeuvres organised by NATO in Scottish waters this week. NATO say three of NATO's standing naval forces consisting of 14 ships have joined more than 40 additional warships and submarines, as well as 70 aircraft in total, around 13,000 personnel from four countries are participating in this exercise. The, Daily, uh, the Telegraph this week have stated that submarine hunting drills led by HMS Ambush, one of the UK Royal Navy's new astute class hunter, killer submarines, and the frigate HMS Somerset will be conducted in Scottish waters. Don't be fooled that the British ruling class have learned, or any ruling class for that matter, throughout the world, have learned anything from the horrors of the First or Second World War. In fact, this ruling class are more reckless than ever. We're talking about austerity, it is linked to austerity. The drive to war is to try and open up new markets to create more wealth for the super rich. Thank you. Thank you very much, Katie. This district is host to an award-winning private school. Does the panel agree with tax breaks for private education? Yes or no? Uh, we are opposed to private schools, full stop. Um, the Tusk candidate mentioned there um, a free education for all. However, <coughs> he didn't say how this would be achieved. Free education and education for everyone, not just the rich, and the best education for just the rich is not going to come about without getting rid of the system that doesn't want your children to be educated to the best level, doesn't want your teachers to be the best and to be able to work in an atmosphere where they can learn themselves, where they have the time to learn themselves, and that they can grow and learn as teachers in order to educate our children. That is not going to happen, and let's not have any illusions in it. The only way that this can come about is a workers' government, the fight for a workers' government. Anna said this was a protest uh, you know, and this is not about protest, it's about who's going to govern. Well, let's send a message that who's going to govern is the working class. The working class don't need these parties who are just about big business. They are not interested in the education of your children. They are not interested in the NHS. That's why it's all been dismantled. And we have to fight for a workers' government based on socialist principles, pledged to, to socialist principles that will fight to pump all the money taken from the multimillionaires and billionaires into education to give our children a proper education. Thank you. The question was, after failed promises of the previous government, i.e. the raise in tuition fees, how do I know I can trust your party? You can trust the Socialist Equality Party to tell you the truth, and that's what we're doing tonight. It may not be popular amongst some people, but it's the truth. This party is a, is a party that seeks to uh, build its base in the mass workers' movement. If you 
um, feel that the working class are the only class that can end the profit system, then this is your party and a party that you should join and build. Tuition fees are supported by all the main, well, most of the main political parties because education is seen as big business and that's who they represent. The SNP may have ended tuition fees for Scottish students, but what about the savage attacks that are going on inside education? Teacher numbers are dwindling. There are zero hour, uh, workers on zero hour contracts throughout education in Scotland. And these are the questions that need to be asked of the Scottish National Party, Nationalist Party. And, and their you know, attempts to tell you that it's going to all be so different in a devolved or an independent uh, Scotland. Ask some deeper questions about the attacks that have been going on in education since at least 2010 and its connection with the drive of austerity. This is a party that's not against austerity. Thank you. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is juicy, very controversial, uh, but it did come from amongst you. Uh, we've had quite a few questions actually about the Middle East. We've had questions about Syria. Uh, people saying that they feel that what's happening to people in Syria is, is dreadful, what ha is happening at the hands of ISIS. Uh, about Muslims killing fellow Muslims, also about the persecution of the ancient Christian communities. So we've, we've actually had to sift quite a lot of things, but we've chosen one which is very strongly worded. We know it's strongly worded, uh, but, and it's controversial, but it is asked by quite a few people, even to this day. Uh, so I apologize if it's controversial, but it's come from amongst this community. And the question was written as follows. Does the panel endorse, or would it actively pursue, if elected, the path for Tony Blair and his entire cabinet of 2003 to be tried for war crimes in The Hague, for the illegal war waged in Iraq, and the mass murder of one million innocent men and women children? Yes or no? Absolutely, 100% yes. Um, I think this is an issue for the workers' movement. The cannon fodder for every war that has ever taken place anywhere in the world has been the working class. Um, and millions and millions of people have died in, we can say, every illegal war, because they're all illegal. These are not wars that represent the interests of the majority of people the First and the Second World War was drawn on the same basis that the, the Third World War is, because the ruling class are driven to it. Tony Blair, yes, he's a liar, but he's a politician. He's a capitalist politician that represents big business. And of course, they tell lies to try and justify. And the Tory candidate here today talked about, we, we have to defend ourselves against Russia. We have to defend and we have to build military uh, manoeuvres. Who are we? He is a capitalist himself and he represents capitalism and his party does. And that's who he's talking about. He's talking about the interests of the super rich and big business, not the interests of the majority. The majority of the world's population is the international workers, working class, and it is not in their interests. And yes, these people are war criminals and should be taken to task. Thank you. Socialist uh, Equality Party. Um, the Tory candidate can joke all he wants about Citizen Smith. This is a serious issue. Revolution is not a utopia. If conditions for war exist, then conditions for revolution exist also. And if you want proof of that, look throughout history. But let's look at, at recent history in Greece. The working class came forward time and time again. And it was betrayed by its own leaderships, by the trade unions. There was general strikes and those movements were sold out. 
The working class turned to an organisation that some of you may have heard of, Syriza, who promised some sort of left socialist government. The working class put the faith in that organisation and within 14 days that organisation had sold them out again by capitulating completely to the International Monetary Fund demands and to the European banks who were demanding that the working class pay for the austerity, uh, through austerity, for the crisis created by big business. It's important to note that the candidate from Tusk and other social, so-called socialists in Scotland have hailed Syriza as a solution to the working class's problems. They're completely uncritical of them now and they're actively fighting for a similar sort of organisation in Scotland. This is a real danger to the working class here in Scotland and also to the international workers' movement. Our manifesto, I've seen some of you have got it in your hands, we call for a workers' government based on socialist policies, an end to militarism and war, for the socialist reorganisation of society, defend democratic rights, and for the United Socialist States of Europe. Attend our international May Day rally on the 4th of May in the Premier Inn in Glasgow. Thank you very much.